no man, no company, no entity owns pro wrestling. We The Elite is one of the most influential and innovative factions in wrestling of all time. The organic and meteoric rise to prominence in the wrestling world has been a sight to behold and will not be replicated to the same magnitude for many, many years to come. They have revolutionized and changed the landscape of wrestling as a whole. In their rise to prominence in the wrestling world, even though the Elite continuously took shots at WWE, WWE kept on offering them big money contracts. This must be the Elite's reaction after shitting all over WWE and then still getting offers from them. <laughs> the elite took a chance on themselves and it paid off massively as the very way wrestling functions has been disrupted. They have broke all the rules and have made it against all odds. They have really taken the art form of wrestling to a new unprecedented level. The elite does get their fair share of criticism though. A lot of people are of the opinion that they are overrated and are glorified indie darlings. A lot of people don't like them because they say that they come off as egotistical goofs that are obnoxious. A lot of people also have the opinion that their matches have no storytelling and are filled with too many spots. Some people find them cringy because of their comedic antics on their YouTube show being the elite, as well as their constant shots at WWE. But the elite take all of this hate into their stride and they take advantage of it by actually encouraging the hate. They lean into the hate and never change for anybody and in this way they have stayed relevant in the wrestling business. It's actually genius marketing if you think about it. There's a loud minority of wrestling fans that are convinced that AEW will fail and that the elite have made wrestling much worse with AEW. This this is basically the elite and AEW haters explaining how AEW will fail and won't exist in a few years. <laughs> The Elite has had many members and iterations down the years, but from the group's inception, there's been three constant figures in the group. This is Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, comprising of Matt and Nick Jackson. Prior to the official formation of the Elite, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks had known each other for years. They originally met in Japan in 2008 and they became close friends. Omega even stated that the three had always felt like they shared the same brain and had the same thought process about what a wrestling match should be. Matt Jackson has described the creative chemistry between the three as unlike anything they could collectively have ever experienced before, even saying that within their trio there is magic. The three men started to wrestle for Japan's biggest promotion, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and they became even closer. The three men eventually found themselves in the Bullet Club, which is a heel stable that is comprised of a group of foreigners that spit in the face of Japanese wrestling. Even though they were making a name for themselves in the Bullet Club, Omega felt that the Bullet Club had been watered down and he wanted to create something new. He claimed that whenever people had been saying the Bullet Club had been doing something really cool, they were in fact always talking about him and the Young Bucks, and not the other members of the Bullet Club. The three men all held common ground and wanted to be together both inside the ring and outside of it. They wanted to create a group with just the three of them, but they needed a name. So they thought about the time when they were on a bus riding through Japan to a wrestling show, and they gave themselves a challenge to come up with a list of the most elite wrestlers in the world. They wrote down their list, but there was something that all of them had on their list that was common. They always put themselves at the top of the list every single time, because they saw themselves as the cream of the crop in wrestling. And so they called themselves the elite as a joke, but funnily enough, this joke morphed into the name that they were brainstorming to call themselves officially, but they had to do something to show their allegiance to each other, and so they did something that would cement their names as the elite. In January of 2016, the Bullet Club were booked to turn on AJ Styles, of which they did. AJ Styles was the leader of the group, but AJ got turned on by the Bullet Club because he was going to WWE. This meant that Kenny Omega took over as a new leader of the Bullet Club. After AJ Styles had been given the beats and the Bullet Club were collectively walking towards the back, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega went into business for themselves and snuck back into the ring to attack AJ Styles more and to take this iconic photo that was plastered on wrestling magazines across Japan. Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks basically said to the rest of the Bullet Club, I don't fuck with you. After this, Matt Jackson posted a picture on Instagram with the caption, the BC Elite, and thus the Elite was born into the world. Soon after this, the Elite won the Never Openweight Six Man Championships, and the Young Bucks went on to dominate the Heavyweight Tag Team Division, and Kenny Omega went on an iconic run in the Singles Heavyweight Division. After the group was formed, the Elite created a YouTube show called Being the Elite. Initially, Being the Elite was intended to be a promotional vehicle and video journal of the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega's life on the road, but slowly it morphed into a hybrid that includes 
skits and storyline developments involving both the elite and the bullet club. Being the elite had a cast of wrestlers from the bullet club involved. Even though they were not formally part of the elite, they played a prominent role on the show. There was Adam Cole, who was a mainstay in ROH and was one of the Young Bucks best friends. And then there was Hangman Adam Page, who was a promising young talent who was on the come up. Then there was Cody Rhodes, who had just asked for his release from WWE and was rebuilding his name in wrestling. And then there was Marty Skull, who was the English bloke of the group with a villain-esque gimmick. On being the elite, this cast of members raised hell and laughed together. From week to week, they did hilarious and entertaining skits that really captivated and entertained the wrestling world. And they could not stop super kicking everybody. I guess the elite took it literally when they said it's a super kick party. Super kick party. However, not after too long, there started to be tension within the elite, as the storyline between Adam Cole and Omega started to brew, with the Young Bucks being caught in the middle. The Young Bucks teased siding with Cole over Omega, but eventually they super kicked Cole and kicked him out of the Bullet Club. Kenny Omega also poisoned Adam Cole's energy drink on being the elite, and that killed him off in a being the elite canon. But in reality, all of this was just because Cole was going to WWE. In the Bullet Club, things also weren't going so smoothly for the being the elite crew, as Cody Rhodes was jealous of Kenny Omega's success and wanted to be the leader of the Bullet Club. This caused animosity between the two and Cody planted seeds and other Bullet Club members heads to turn on Kenny Omega. This animosity spilled over as Kenny got so insecure about his position as the leader of the Bullet Club that he shoved Matt Jackson in frustration one week. In the segment, Cody Rhodes dove deep into his dark desires and officially turned on Kenny Omega by giving him a crossroads. This put the Bullet Club Civil War in full effect. After this, Kota Ibushi came out for the save, and just like that, the Golden Lovers had reunited. There was a lot of tension going on between the Elite at this moment, because they were not really on the same page. Their ill feelings came to a head at Strong Style in the USA 2018, in the match between the Golden Lovers and the Young Bucks. This match was an excellent example of scintillating and exhilarating tag team wrestling. It was rated 5 stars by Dave Maltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, and the Golden Lovers took the win in this match. After this match, Nick Jackson shook hands and embraced with Kenny Omega, but Matt Jackson Jackson refused this and rolled out the ring. The elite at this moment were in shambles. The Bullet Club Civil War raged on and Cody and Omega's intense feud culminated at Ring of Honor's Super Card of Honor 12. In this match, the Young Bucks interfered and attempted to turn on Cody, but accidentally super kicked Kenny Omega, causing Cody to get the pinfall victory. After the match, the Young Bucks attempted to explain what happened to Omega, but Omega was having none of it and shoved Matt Jackson and left. After this incident, Kenny Omega declared that their friendship is over and that there is no elite. At this point in time, things were looking very bleak and it seemed like the elite will never ever get back together. But at Dominion 2018 in Osaka, this all changed. At this pay-per-view, the Young Bucks won the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championships and Kenny Omega won the IWGP Heavyweight Championship in the main event in a classic match against Kazuchika Okada, which is widely called the greatest match of all time. After this absolute banger of a match, the Young Bucks came out and even though they weren't on the greatest of terms with Kenny Omega, they congratulated him and hugged it out with them and Kota Ibushi. This was such a touching moment because it just proved that even though the storm between them had come, the love that they had for each other never swayed and remained constant. After this match, at a press conference, Kenny Omega said that going forward, Ibushi is a member of the Elite. This meant that Ibushi was the first official new member of the group. The Elite then went through with their first ever name change and redubbed themselves as the Golden Elite. This red hot run was happening at the perfect time because being the Elite had also become massively popular in the wrestling world. The Elite were absolutely killing it and their movement grew to large proportions. WWE saw how big the Elite were getting in the West and most of the Elite did not want to join WWE so they tried to stifle their growth in different ways. But the Elite weren't phased by this and used their creativity to get around it. In fact, because WWE took notice of them, it made them that much bigger. The Elite basically stood for everything in wrestling that was anti-establishment and against the status quo. The Elite pissed off the WWE machine and they managed to create a genuine demand for an alternative wrestling product in the West. The the Elite were by far the hottest group in wrestling. Their fire was growing at a rapid rate and that caused them to be the first wrestlers outside of WWE to own their own Funko Pop figures. Their merchandise was also selling like hotcakes, so this caused the Elite to sign a deal with major US distributor Hot Topic to sell their merchandise. This was really, really impressive considering that they had basically done all of this by themselves. They had promoted their brand purely on social media and the dividends returned exponentially. They were getting really big and on Twitter, one tweet set off a chain of events that had huge ramifications in the wrestling world. At the WWE guy underscore, asked Dave Meltzer if ROH could sell 10,000 tickets and Meltzer responded, 
not anytime soon. Cody Rose then took Meltzer's remark as a challenge and responded, I'll take that bet, Dave. This idea evolved from a Ring of Honor show to be a self-funded show. This all set the gears in motion for the biggest independent wrestling show ever, All In, which was promoted by Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks. It was announced that Kenny Omega would also be wrestling on the event along with various high-profile wrestlers. In the build-up to All In, Matt Jackson revealed that as well as Kota Ibushi, Cody Rhodes, Adam Page and Marty Skull were now official members of the Elite and had no association with the Bullet Club. This now meant that the Elite had 7 members in the build-up to All In. This was the highest amount of members that they have had in their history. All In was a massive risk for the Elite because they were putting their names and legacies on the line. And if it were to flop, it could seriously hamper their careers. The elite weren't holding back and they were putting everything that they had on the line, hence the name All In. The worry that they had was unwarranted though as the demand in the west for big time alternatives to WWE was too powerful and the tickets to All In sold out in 29 minutes. This was monumental because it was the first time that a non-WWE show had sold 10,000 plus tickets since the days of WCW. The wrestling world had a certain smell in the air. It had the smell of a renaissance. All In came around and this was an absolutely fantastic show that had a variety of matches that gave the 10,000 plus fans that attended more than their money's worth. The significance of the show can't be understated as it is the most important show in wrestling of the 2010s decade. This show was a love letter to professional wrestling and garnered a massive amount of attention from the wrestling world. The Elite had built up a huge fan base by creating trust, goodwill and an unbreakable bond with the audience. This amount of influence they had wasn't supposed to be possible but somehow the Elite managed to pull it off. It felt like a revolution, but the thing about a revolution is that it doesn't last for one night. After All In, fans were questioning what would happen to the Elite. They said that they were going to be sticking together, but unfortunately Ibushi left the group soon after. Marty Skull also departed soon after. Marty Skull later became the head booker of ROH, but during the speaking out movement, he was exposed for some vile things he did with an inebriated minor, which ultimately led him to lose his job at ROH. Rest in piss. Rest in piss. Even though the elite had rejected WWE many times at this point, WWE came knocking on their door again, but this time with an even bigger offer. Triple H had offered the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega $500,000 per year guaranteed, which is a huge offer. This would have made the elite rich as f Here comes the money! Here we go! Money talk! At a certain point after All In, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega were having a meeting concerning their future. They all came to the conclusion that they were all going to WWE, but then at the right moment, Tony Khan, who was part of a multi-billion dollar family, gave them a call and gave them an offer for less money but one that really piqued their interest. Tony Khan offered them a chance to change the wrestling industry forever by creating a new promotion that will rival WWE. Just like that, the Elite had a decision to make. Either go to WWE and cash in on the gargantuan buzz that they've created, or stay in New Japan and Ring of Honor to build those companies further or create a new wrestling company in the USA to challenge WWE's monopoly on western wrestling. This was an incredibly hard decision but the elite chose the latter and formed All Elite Wrestling AEW. Going into the formation of AEW, the members of the elite were Kenny Omega, Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, Cody Rhodes and Hangman Adam Page. They were all executive vice presidents except for Adam Page. The vision for the company was to change the wrestling world and give wrestlers creative freedom and also a more athletic presentation of pro wrestling. AEW took the wrestling world by storm overnight and they were the number 2 promotion in America without ever having a single show. The elite then announced AEW's TV deal with TNT which was the same network that WCW was broadcasted on almost 20 20 years ago. How apropos that that was the case. AEW then announced Double or Nothing on May 25, 2019 at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. This event sold out in 4 minutes once again, showing how much momentum the Elite had. This show was a massive success and was one of the best shows of 2019. AEW had all the hype in the world, going into their October debut of AEW Dynamite on TNT. On this show, the Elite started feuding with Chris Jericho's new faction called the Inner Circle, comprising of Jake Hager, formerly known as Jack Swagger in WWE, Sammy Guevara, and Santana and Ortiz. The debut episode of Dynamite ended with the Inner Circle standing tall over the Elite. The Elite were finding it very hard to adapt in AEW with the Inner Circle constantly on their backs. First, Kenny Omega lost to Chris Jericho at Double or Nothing 2019, then Hangman Adam Page lost the match to crown the inaugural AEW World Champion to Chris Jericho at AEW's All Out 2019, then Cody Rhodes lost his World Championship match to Chris Jericho at AEW's Full Gear 2019, which meant that he could never challenge for the World Championship ever again. At Full Gear 2019 as well, the Young Bucks lost to the inner circle Santana and Ortiz. The elite at this point basically sucked.
All of this had big repercussions on the elite as the group as a whole was suffering from a lack of confidence. Fortunately, on a positive note, Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page won the AEW World Tag Team Championships. But right before this happened, Hangman was taking so many L's that he felt that he was being overshadowed by the elite and he told the Young Bucks that he wanted to leave the group. I'm not going to go into depth on Hangman's arc with the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega because I have covered this extensively in my two videos that span almost 40 minutes. You should definitely check those out if you haven't and please like the video while you're at it. The Young Bucks were reluctant to let Hangman leave the group and this caused them to be animosity between them. Hangman was a peripheral member of the elite on the verge of permanently leaving. Their beef culminated at AEW's Revolution 2020 for the AEW World Tag Team Championships in what many people call the greatest tag team match of all time. It was rated 6 stars in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Hangman and Kenny picked up the win in this match. The elite story was one of the hottest stories in wrestling but unfortunately the pandemic hit and all of this momentum was halted. They were scheduled to go up against the inner circle in the first ever Blood and Guts match, but this was scraped due to the pandemic. After this, Cody Rhodes left the Elite to focus on building his new faction, the Nightmare Family. The Elite now consisted of four members, but they were still feuding with the five man in a circle. So because of this, Broken. Matt Hardy was a temporary member of the Elite in the 5 and 5 Stadium Stampede match at AEW's Double or Nothing 2020. This was an extremely entertaining match. Even though there was an immense amount of tension between Young Bucks and Hangman, the Elite managed to pick up the win. The win didn't really matter though as they fell out further with each other after the match. Hangman was desperate for friendship and started hanging out with the freshly debuted FTR who convinced Hangman to interfere in a Young Bucks match causing them to lose a shot at the AEW World Tag Team Championships. The Young Bucks were so pissed off at this and they harshly kicked Hangman out of the Elite. This left Hangman truly lost but he found friends eventually with the Dark Order and he became very close to them. At this point in time, the Elite were back to its OG3 members of Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. Even though they created the company, they had been struggling to get to the mountaintop of AEW but after all of this that had happened, it lit a fire under their ass and gave them a new lease on wrestling and they were now on the for championships. The Young Bucks did this first by winning the AEW World Championships from FTR at AEW's Full Gear 2021. And after this, their fellow elite member Kenny Omega got associated with his family friend Don Callis and he turned heel and he won the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. After this, Kenny Omega aligned himself with old Bullet Club OGs Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows and they assaulted John Moxley after a match. And the Young Bucks came out for the save for John Moxley and they tried to speak some sense into Kenny Omega but Kenny Omega said to them, that there's no use in them fighting with each other and then he put up the too sweet hand signal and the young bucks reluctantly put up the too sweet sign. Carl Anderson and Dark Gallows were now the newest official members of the newest iteration of the group called the super elite. But the super elite wasn't all good at first because some beef was brewing between the young bucks and Kenny Omega's manager and family friend Don Callis and after weeks and weeks of indirect insults from Don Callis, the young bucks were separating themselves more and more from Kenny Omega. And one week Kenny Omega confronted the Young Bucks because he says that they weren't fully committing to being bad guys and he gave the Young Bucks a choice to join him, Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows officially but the Young Bucks declined and they walked out of the ring and in a turn of events the Young Bucks chose to instead align with Kenny Omega's arch nemesis and biggest rival John Moxley and in a six man tag between John Moxley and the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows the Young Bucks officially turned heel by super kicking John Moxley Moxley and officially joining the dark side. The fully heel elite was born and for the first time in a long time they went on a rampage throughout AEW. They were finally the top dogs in AEW and were holding all the gold. It was like the prophecy had come true because now the super elite were truly super elite. The elite wore outrageous and ludicrous outfits every week and fans made fun of their outfits but honestly this is the definition of drip. You fellas only make fun of me because you fear my drip. <laughs> oh shut up Ringo. As if you'd ever have drip. AEW's All Out 2021 turned out to be an eventful night for the Super Elite. On this night, the Young Bucks lost the AEW World Tag Team Championships against the Lucha Brothers in a steel cage match, but fortunately, Kenny Omega defended his title successfully in the main event against Christian Cage. However, after this match, the rest of the Elite came down to the ring and proceeded to give the beats to Christian Cage and Jurassic Express. But then while Omega was bidding adieu to the fans, this iconic music hit. You know it's all about Adam Cole came back from the dead and joined the elite. It was so nice to see Adam Cole back with the elite because if he had not joined WWE in 2017 then he would have most certainly been one of the pillars of AEW and possibly even an EVP for the company. After Adam Cole's debut the American Dragon Brian Danielson made his debut in AEW and he proceeded to lay out the elite. 
Soon after Adam Cole's debut, the Good Brothers, Carl Anderson and Dark Gallows, quietly left the Super Elite. And now the group was reconverted to being named the Elite, and it consisted of Adam Cole, the Young Bucks, and Kenny Omega. During all this time, the Elite continued to feud with Hangman. One week, in a 5 on 5 elimination match, Nick Jackson hurled Hangman Adam Page's leg and cost him a shot at the AEW World Championship, causing Hangman to leave AEW for a while. But when Hangman returned, he won the casino ladder match, and this made him the number one contender for Kenny Omega's AEW World Championship. In their championship match at Fort Gear, the Young Bucks had the opportunity to interfere by helping Kenny retain and costing Hangman the match. But ironically, the Young Bucks didn't do anything and they allowed Hangman to beat Kenny. Hangman became the new AEW World Champion and this just showed that the Young Bucks still cared about Hangman. After this match, Kenny Omega revealed that he did not watch the match back and that he was going to take a leave of absence from the group due to his injury. However, before the match at Fort Gear, former Undisputed Era member and longtime friend of Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, had joined AEW. Obviously, Bobby and Cole had an extensive history, so they naturally gravitated towards each other. This left the Young Bucks suspicious about what was to come. What worsened the Young Bucks' feeling was when former Undisputed Era member and longtime friend of Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, also debuted in AEW. Three fourths of the Undisputed Era were now in AEW. But eventually, the Young Bucks accepted Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, and they became the Undisputed Elite. While Cody Rhodes was not a part of the Elite, he was still an integral part of AEW, seeing that he was an EVP. So even even though he was not a part of the elite on screen, he was very much a part of the elite backstage as he constantly interacted with them. But earlier in 2021, reports came out that said Cody was not on talking terms with Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. Cody denied these rumors, but there was evidently some substance there because when Cody's contract was expiring, he chose not to re-sign with AEW, even though AEW was the company that he helped to build. Cody then went to WWE in a very uncharacteristic and unexpected move. Nonetheless, the undisputed elite caused a ruckus on the AEW scene. And Adam Cole earned a title shot at Hangman Adam Page's World Championship. In their match at Revolution 2022, Adam Cole lost this match, but not too long after this, he was granted a rematch, which was a Texas death match, but unfortunately, he lost this match again. During Kenny Omega's absence from AEW, the Young Bucks felt bad for the way that they had fallen out with Hangman, and they wanted to rekindle their friendship with him, so they slowly started to gravitate towards him. While all of this was going on, Adam Cole was out of action with an injury, but while he was at home, he was watching what was going on between the Young Bucks and Hangman Adam Adam Page. So when Adam Cole returned, him, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish turned on the Young Bucks, thus causing an end to the Undisputed Elite. This even caused a kid to cry in the crowd. You know you're a bad motherfucker when you're making kids cry. In an unexpected manner, Hangman came to the save for the Young Bucks, once again showing how much Hangman cares. A trios tournament to crown the inaugural trios champions was also announced and the Young Bucks wanted Hangman to be their partner in the tournament. So because of this, they apologized for all that they had done to him and optimistically popped the question to him. However, it was a little bit too late and Hangman denied their proposition. Not because he held any animosity towards the Young Bucks, but he told them that he would rather have the Dark Order's backs because they had always had his back and they haven't turned on him all of this time. which is a very valid reason. Hangman said that he's not even in the tournament and he's going to be in the Dark Order's corner supporting them. The Young Bucks were visibly upset by this, but Hangman consoled them and urged the Young Bucks to find someone that wouldn't turn their backs on them. Hmm, somebody to partner the Young Bucks in a trio's tournament that wouldn't turn their backs on them. Kenny Omega was back in AEW and the band was back together again. Kenny Omega being back in AEW felt like this. What the fuck, baby? Kenny Omega is fucking back. The Elite. Here, baby. The Elite. The fucking here, baby. The Elite were back together again and in their first match of the trios tournament, they faced off against La Facción Igno Bernables, picking up the win in an excellent match that showcased the Elite at their full powers once again. In the second round of the tournament, the Elite faced off against Kenny Omega's real life arch nemesis Will Ospreay and Ozzy Open. They faced off in a match that was truly excellent and just like that, they were on their way to AEW's All Out 2022 in the finals against the Dark Order. But in the Dark Order's journey to the final, Preston Vance obtained an injury and that led to Hangman Adam Page replacing him. This meant that the Elite were now faced up against the Dark Order and Hangman Adam Page at AEW's All Out 2022 and the crowd were hot as holy hell for seeing Hangman and Omega back in the ring again. This was one of if not the greatest trios match in AEW history and the Elite picked up the win in the end. The Elite were now the first ever trios champions in AEW and this was a monumental achievement. But after double or nothing, their achievement was overshadowed 
overshadowed by CM Punk's comments that he made regarding the elite, which is a whole nother topic in itself that we'll get to on another day. But anyway, that's the story so far of the elite. The Elite made wrestling a better place through All Elite Wrestling. They had a vision for wrestling that came to fruition and now so many people have jobs because of it and a lot of people's passions for wrestling have been rekindled. They're also a symbol on many people's hearts to never ever give up because their journey throughout Japan and America has just been so inspiring. They will go down as one of the greatest of all time. Truly fitting for the Elite. Thank you for watching the video. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. But anyway, goodbye you jobbers.